for, for plebs, by plebs, dropping the Bitcoin only signal. Pleb underground. Welcome everyone to the Pleb Underground. Pleb Underground, we're at a hundred, they flew round, but none squandered day, one sound, but still not encumbered play, don't stop believing until 100k. Bitcoin the money, it's peer to peer, clan world's still funny, it's year to year, sun shining, I'm smiling ear to ear, boat trip soon, go wiling, peer to peer, the sun, just in, anchored like Tron Burgundy, I'm not tightened down, I make cuts like a surgeon, be ruthless and cunning, can't be a burden, see, you can't fall to victimhood, it's serial as per Bundy. If you don't like what I say, then you call me a bully while I point out the strings that tether to the pulley. Sure, use some cables once you can pull her. Show commitment to the project. Channel P. Wooler. You already know I'm like, unlike the rest. You already know I'm not at your behest. You already know I'm super. Test net positive. Oops, I confessed. It's now public. Feel blessed. Save not invest. Of course, stacking sats is the main best that you stress. She's the favorite side quest. Episode 100. It's already here. It's amazing how words can bring out a tear. Just be authentic yourself and please have no fear. Except when cooking your steaks, you must have a sear. Fuck the euro and the ECB. Bitcoin only. Don't need to pick six like a CB. Real stackers. No, there's no easy B. Can't try to regulate Bitcoin, though ECB. You can only wash it with HSBC. Pretend to be innocent like HSB. See and me on my stage now like an LTSBC. If you're not on the list when you call it's busy. Always left them off the latch. Fox. Cleans up in the hatch. Socks. Your reality 22 catch. Gox. Always bring the fire like a matchbox. Have fun staying poor. Have fun slaying more. Or have fun praying. Or have fun playing whore. I try not to reuse a rhyme. She doesn't want to reuse a dress. You can't reuse your time. You don't want to reuse your stress. We got 100 shows close to 100 flows. 99% oblivious. One in 100 no's. I get a lot of yeses. You get 100 no's. 100 chances. You blundered those. If you got one good girl, you don't need 100 hoes. Possessions can weigh you down like 100 foes. I don't need much. Family Bitcoin. Not 100. Those. Are my rhymes how I make sense? Of the fiat worlds, the pounds and pence. Hence when it confounds, my pensive walks give space from apprehensive talks. Allow me to zoom out, give Hawkeye vision. Can't let the world burn, let live, unlike forks. Being the main character, can't be with orcs. Open your eyes, you must just see. Silence fast, lightning censures, let's take a cut, no suture, frightening accentures. Profits, there's the glut, no teeth tightening dentures. Invest in the future, light lightning ventures. Around here, we do what we do. Always talk straight. I could not be you. In this game, ain't none stepping to. I rep my people and me. Who's repping you? I don't know how you do it, Walton. You always seem to bring the fire. That was absolutely awesome. Guys, that's right. Episode 100 of the Pleb Underground. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you. We love doing this. And joining us today very special guest, fellow Bitcoiner, Pleb. He is the founder of Lightning Ventures, the CEO of Thunder Funder, and he's known to his friends as the Muzz Man. That's right. We've got Mike Jarmuz. Dude, thank you so much for joining us on the Pleb Underground. Ow, that rap was fire, my man. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. It's good to be here and uh, ready to have some fun. Let's do it. All right. We're going to dive into the numbers. The other numbers, of course, brought to us by Time Chain Stats and Time Chain Calendar for the last 100 episodes. Phil, what do they look like this week? At the time of this recording, the block height is 858,119. The Bitcoin fiat exchange, 61,926, oh, 925.94. Okay, it's just moving, whatever. All right, so big max, big max per corn. What do we get here? For one Bitcoin, we're getting 12,024, oh, 12,023 big max. Total public lightning capacity, 5,047. Fastest fee, six sats per V-byte. What what happened to the what happened to the stakers? Oh yeah, that's right. It was a limited launch. Anyways, Moscow time, 1615. Boom. The numbers. You get a little uh you, did, did you get a little worried, Walton, when you saw that uh, that fee spike on uh, on Thursday? You get a little concerned? No? You're muted. Nobody knows you're concerned. What fee spike? Like I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you, I'm not, I'm, come yeah, on. I'm not doing. Uh, you didn't see the two hours that, that it went up. Um, no? 
Okay, so he's, he on. wasn't concerned. All right. Uh, uh, well, I think the one thing to note, though, is that, and, and this is, I know it's a bullshit stat, but like market market cap, right? 1.22 trillion. I quite like, I quite like that. That's quite, it's quite, it's quite a number. I feel like we were, it was like teetering on under 1 trillion for a long time and like being over a trillion, I think has uh, implications for, for how other people view it um, I'm sure. I'm sure Mike knows more about this than, than than I do. But there there are some assets that essentially aren't big enough for certain people to pay attention to. And once they get a certain size, uh, different classes of of, of investors uh, and some savers uh, start start paying attention. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Right, a trillion dollar asset does have a a pretty nice ring to it. Mike, well, what are your what are your thoughts on this? I mean, psychologically, it's nice to say, right? Psychologically, it... it's, a, it's a trillion or more, right? It's going to be better when it's like a 35 trillion, you know? Uh, but Gold's at 17 currently. Um, somehow somehow all of the big tech, like, inflated. I swear, like, a couple of years ago, you know, one of them hit 1 trillion for the first time, and now you've got uh, three that are over 3 trillion, apparently. Um and then you know a couple around two. Hmm. How do we get to that thirty-five trillion? We're still behind right? silver. I thought we overtook silver. It's pretty, you know things change, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Do you have that chart in front of you? What is the next? Yeah, uh, let me let me share my screen. What, here what, so what you is can that see meme with the green the Grim Reaper at the doors? You know. Yes. Go, what's next, yes. What's that's the such next a great one meme. on the list here. So Facebook. Who uses Facebook? Facebook's Nest? <sighs> Uh, boomers and um and they got nothing else to do but sit on the internet anyways like the rest of us so trust me i watched my father i watched my father do like dude. maybe millennial mums dude my, Gen, my dad Gen X do, mums my dad doom scrolls facebook <laughs> i never i never even thought you could do that and i've watched him do it i'm like damn I didn't even know there was that much interesting stuff there. They have terrible memes on Facebook, though. Like, what do you, what do you do? Like, there's just <laughs> like people <laughs> complaining about like their local shop being closed and they couldn't get their shopping. Like, there's just like, like there's just nonsense. Like, there's no real stuff on. Anyway, okay. Um, so what you're what, what you're showing us though is is that Bitcoin is still not where it needs to be, right? It's 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 not this apex uh, predator just just yet. No. Look, is there somebody alive who doesn't know who Warren Buffett is or doesn't know about Berkshire? I mean, looking at that, it's just it's impressive that Bitcoin is not more mainstream in the face all day long because I mean it's right there. It's sandwiched in between, you know, Berkshire and and Facebook. Mike, so, it doesn't have a centralized marketing department. All of these other ones do, right? This is the this is the key key difference. You know this. Yes. It's the big difference. Anyways, but you know what? You know what is kind of starting to act like a marketing department for Bitcoin? Hear me out. The ETFs. That's 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 what we're going to take a look at. For uh, gross. I, I thought know. you were going to go a way better yeah. direction of than course, that, Of course. Of course you thought I was going. You know me. Come on, man. You're doing this. <laughs> Come on. You've been with me for two <laughs> years. You know I'm going to talk about some cringe stupidity. Let's dive into this. All right. Here we go. That's right, Walton. Here's the cringe stupidity. And this, sadly, sad, look, I, I, I don't like saying it, but when it comes to legacy money and it comes to mainstream media, this is the BS that gets their attention, the ETFs. And here you go. You know, again, I, I hear it's really crazy. I hear more and more narrative talking about how we're dead at 60K, how this cycle is a bust, you know, grayscale's dumping, Mt. Gox dumping, UK, you know, seizing coins, blah, 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 Germany dumping. Well, here you go, guys. New Bitcoin ETF saw inflows in 10 days of the last 12 days. So there you go. As we are, quote unquote, dead and dying and the cycle is busting. Right, the uh, the ETFs, I don't know. They're still doing uh, they're still doing numbers. So this kind of brings up the question. Kind of brings up the question: Do uh, do we still think that the ETFs are a price suppression tool against Bitcoin, the actual asset? Fuck the ETFs. <laughs> yes, of course. I love the ETFs. I think ETFs are great. Ah. <laughs> 
I, Listen, I don't it's know. A gateway Why drug. did gold okay, fail? It's a, it's, a, it's a gateway drug for Bitcoin. Why did gold fail? It was captured. It was captured. It was all you can the... print a bunch of paper on top. And to me, ETFs, in theory, are, you know, tradable, but like... So, but... Okay, but hold on a second. they got the Bitcoin? But Mike, l let me ask you this, because this is one of the things I've thought of a few times as well, and I'm not... I, I'm just... I haven't convinced myself of this, like... Do we think that is it that we think that these ET, the the Bitcoin ETF buyers are going to be Trojan horse into actually owning Bitcoin, the asset instead of the ETFs? Is that it? Because I, I don't know. I I wrestle with that one. Eventually, but you're not giving you you know we if you've been in Bitcoin for a while, you often forget about how terrifying it is. OK, and still the user experience of, listen, mom, this is going to be your first Bitcoin. These are 24 words. Don't ever lose them. Your life savings gone. All right. Uh, you know, that still is like very hard to get over. You know, that's it's a tough onboarding experience. OK, I got these words. Oh, wait, I'll take a picture of it with my. No, don't do that. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Um, and and it's the ETFs provide sort of a way that Aunt Mary and Uncle Bob can play around with something that's not a derivatives contract, okay? It's not like one of these other ETFs. It's not subject to decay and CME options and all these kind of nonsense things. But, you know, supposedly they're running them properly, okay? Wait, so they don't they, have fees? For now, they don't have fees, but though the fees are coming, right? I, I think they're still in the no fee period except for GBTC. Um, but whatever, there'll be fees, right? And, you know, there's mm -hmm. fees for other things, you know? I mean, there's some people charge you to, Unchained has a fee, you know? I mean, you want to have a, a multi-sig sort of setup or you want to move your IRA. I mean, a lot of other, you know. But that's a flat uh, fee, not a percentage, right? I think there's a, it's, there's a big difference. I think it's an annual fee, um, but yeah, you're right. It it is it is still a percentage, but that percentage of peace of mind of like you don't have to worry about the self custody. But then it's like in stages. Oh no, I right? meant like, like the, the the ETFs and other trad five products charge a percentage fee of of like how much you have, whereas a fee to so unchained is just a flat fee for the for the for the period time period. I think. I think it's two hundred fifty dollars a year to be an Unchained customer. I think, but that's not that, that figure doesn't change if you have more Bitcoin. Is my point. Whereas, like tr with TradFi products, if you have more ETF, you're going to be paying more in fees because it's a percentage fees rather than a flat fee. Right. So yeah, a traditional stock doesn't have a fee like that, but ETFs do have a fee, right? Your S and P ETFs or actively managed ETFs. Um, I mean, they all have a fee. So you're right. I mean, there is a fee associated with it, um, but there's also a, a bigger fee associated it, with it if you're new to Bitcoin and you lose some. Uh, that's a that's a hefty fee too, and I, I don't know anyone who hasn't lost at least some amount of Bitcoin, right? Whether it's twenty dollars in a in a, a blue wallet uh, that you know whatever happens, you were hasty. I, I've never saying, lost it by losing keys, but I'm a multi sig maxi. maxi. You've never lost Sats in any wallet anywhere, you know. Not not lost. Like have I like one one time did I borrow some against Bitcoin and then like not responsibly manage the LTV maybe. But like I've never lost Bitcoin. You've never wanted to try a Bitcoin wallet on your phone, downloaded it quickly, screenshotted the QR code. You're playing around with twenty, thirty dollars. You're testing a new nope. wallet, and then something happens. No, no. I was gonna God say neither. You. Yeah, we're <laughs> neither of us. But but look, how about this, right? I do get I also your never point. Bought a shit coin, but like, there's different ways to do things. Like you know. But I, I get your point about the, the, the mom and pop, right? Like I, I've talked about this many times. Uh, it, it took me a very long time to, to get my father to, to go and actually uh, not just install a wallet, right? But to go and actually purchase Bitcoin. Um, so yes, I, I, can definitely, I, I can definitely relate to that. But, uh, but let me ask you this. Um, how, much, how much do you, how do I say this? Like, do you believe that there is a correlation maybe, or have you noticed a correlation in your experience between the attention given towards the Bitcoin ETFs um, kind of becoming, let's say, interest in Bitcoin businesses, right? Like, you know, so it's like all of a sudden 
you're getting this, you know, there's this mainstream exposure to the ETFs and then people start to think, you know, do you believe that this is translating into people thinking, should we be investing in Bitcoin businesses? Like, have you noticed any kind of uptick in that interest? Before we get into the fireside chat and really dive into what you do, but I, I just, I, well, I was wait, thinking- but, that... Wait, because we're talking about this ETF thing. I just want to make okay. a couple of quick points. All right, okay, so this okay, is go. really fun, right? Because, <laughs> you know, if you have an, if you have an E-Trade account, or a fidelity account or interactive brokers or whatever you're doing right if you have you know $25,000 worth of bitcoin ETFs or stocks of any kind in the tradfi i can immediately fire up a margin account okay i can withdraw that money i can pay a decent interest rate in comparison to what anyone else is going to give me for a loan or a credit card or anything else, right? Um, actually, very fair, better than most, right? So you could actually have like 100K in ETFs, and you could like for no fees virtually besides that interest rate, you could actually borrow against it. You could double up on it if you were overly bullish and wanted to do some sort of leverage play, not like BitMEX wrecked, but you know, whatever you borrow in that traditional traditional um, account, that traditional um, um, brokerage account, and you put back into Bitcoin or you live off of or whatever, that's far superior to like any Bitcoin lending product on the market is just using what it exists currently with like um, with E-Trade and brokerages and whatever. Mm. So there's a lot of like really cool things that you could do. What it doesn't mean is like sell all your physical Bitcoin and stick it in an ETF. But there is a way to kind of complement your cold storage Bitcoin with doing some cool stuff. Um, you know, if you were- You sound like Tina. Oh no, I don't want to sound like anyone like Tina. That. Or funny, even... like now, now like T Tina used to be known for like you know it, it means there is no alternative, right? B Bitcoin yeah. only in cold storage, and Bitcoin now Tina. now it means there is an alternative, uh, and and a few people are in support of it. Yeah, I mean, look, like I say, I go... the different the point is is that you should do with your money whatever you want to do with your money, and depending on what stage you're at in life, you should, probably should do different things. If you're young, you should go balls deep, more than a hundred percent of your net worth into cold storage Bitcoin. If if you're if you're a little bit later, or you've got a bit more money, then you start looking at like, well, okay. I, I, how do I how do I how do I not just preserve what I've got? How do maybe I accelerate Bitcoin adoption? I see a lot of like VC investing is they they they're not necessarily looking to to make the Bitcoin back. They're just looking to pump Bitcoin, and they think this company is going to kind of do that by by making it you know enabling adoption further. Um, or are you like at a later stage in life where you're sort of like retired and you're wanting to kind of withdraw regularly from your portfolio if you're if if you're if you're at that stage bitcoin is pr probably pretty pretty terrible um like bitcoin only um uh, if you are trying to like preserve some sort of fiat value over some sort of period of time or like but again it's like you have to decide what's right for you there is no correct strategy for everyone that's it Right. And I didn't, I didn't mean to get caught up on all this. Okay. I just mean that like uh, for my mom in particular, okay, <laughs> last, you know, she had a Swan account. Okay. Don't say anything. All right. But she had a Swan account that was buying a little bit. Okay. Every week that was a good intro. And then it was like, listen, this is- Wait, were they sending her tiny UTXOs? No. Uh, well- Anyway, uh, she had a Swan account buying a little bit every week, right? And then okay, we, got her the, we got her the strike wallet, okay? This is a lightning wallet. If you want to smash buy, this is fun, right? Okay, you know, she's got that going on, all right? And then apes in the retirement account uh, into Bitcoin ETFs, right? Which has, been, which has been quite an experience and wild ride. And then this year at Christmas, okay, when I give, when she opens that Trezor wallet, okay, with the secure element chip that I'm going to give her and she says, what's this right we're gonna have that fun exercise of withdrawing all those funds right and then she says well why, why, why is this different right my mom's not thinking about a 6102 order no <laughs> plus percent of people have no idea what that is you know and i think that it's it's definitely a journey okay in the process of the individual who eventually realizes um why self custody and you know uh, that's that is the only way but i wouldn't be quite as hardcore as you walton and uh and um and you know really 
scold anyone uh, who wanted to dip their feet into the Bitcoin world by, you know, getting a little FBTC. Uh, like, I'm, I'm not really. I'm, I'm saying like people should do whatever they want with their money. Um, does, it, does it mean that like I think you, you're not doing it right? Maybe, but like, it doesn't mean I'm going to tell you to not do it. No. Not like extensively. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that out there as a general message. Yeah, don't, don't buy ETFs, but like, you know, you do what you want to do with your money. I, I just think you're wrong for, for. Yeah, I think people are retarded for doing that. Each of their own. Yeah. People are absolutely going to do whatever they're compelled to do. Guys, guess what? This is going to wrap up the numbers, and we're going to move it on over to the Fireside Chat. The Fireside Chat is brought to you by CypherSafe. Check them out at cyphersafe.io. That's right, guys. I am a pet rock enjoyer, and for the pet rock enjoyers out there, check out the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle. 16 ounces of solid titanium, beautiful craftsmanship made by a fellow Bitcoiner. Guys, this is the Bitcoin Rolo Triangle at cyphersafe.io. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fireside Chat. As you know, our special guest for the episode is Mike Jarmuz, the Muzzman. And as I stated at the beginning, right, he is the founding of Lightning Ventures, CEO of Thunder Funder. And guys, we, we don't usually have, we, we don't usually have, you know, VCs on this on this show. Evil so it's, suits. I'm one evil of those suits, evil but you're, suits. Are scum. Uh, those venture capitalists are scumbags. How I, dare I, you have them on the pleb <laughs> underground? It's, stop. He's already dead. No, <laughs> no. But look, dude, uh, we we really appreciate you joining us on the show, and I am very excited to to really get your perspective on this side of the the bitcoin because uh, uh, bitcoin business funding because of course uh people like me who wear a tinfoil hat all the time have our own imaginary you know uh universe of of what this all works like and then there's what's actually going on so what well, why don't we like dive into it right like you're you're the founder of lightning ventures let's start with lightning ventures before we dive into thunder funder what's lightning ventures what do you do sure. there so Lightning Ventures is a, a venture capital firm, a boutique, emerging, just my little thing, uh, where we just focus on Bitcoin startups. So um, unlike traditional uh, venture capitalists, where they're all about taking your money, right? Give us your money and we'll invest it for you, which is fine and all. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, we have a little bit of a different mission. I have a different mission, which is I like to empower you to make your own decisions, okay? To do what you want with your money. So what we operate is, a, a, it's called a syndicate, right? Which is basically a group of angel investors. And what, what I do is, is I go out and I source the deals. Um, I, we put together uh, a deal memo. We do the due diligence. We're investing our own money, of course, okay? And then we put the deal in front of you, right? And our members. So if you woke up one day, you might get an email that says, Lightning Ventures invites you to invest in Strike. And you might say, oh my God, that's cool. I love that company. And then you can read about it. You can read about the deal. The minimums are low. So it only costs maybe $1,000 if you wanted to participate in that offering. And these are real investments on the same terms as the VCs, as the suits, as the other people that are out there. Most of the time, right? There's always an asterisk, but most of the time you're investing on the same terms and you can participate for a low minimum. So that's- What are the trade-offs with that? Is it, is it that it essentially it's a custodial thing, like you're giving money to to the fund to, to do that? Or like, how, how does it? No. So you, okay, so. Because it seems unlike... like it's a way to skirt the regulation, right, of being a, a certain, having a certain status as an, a certain kind of investor. No. Okay. So that's the thing is, is there's no way to skirt that. You do need to be an accredited investor to join Lightning Ventures, right? And it's free to join, okay. of course. Oh. You do need to be an accredited investor. But, you know, I've said it before, it's interesting the way the SEC sets up those accredited investor uh, rules. It's a self-certification process. I like to joke that everyone's an accredited investor if you click the right button. Uh, that is pretty much what it comes down to. So, um, so yes, everyone in Lightning Ventures is an accredited investor, and uh, they can participate for those low minimums. They can fund it with fiat. Uh, AngelList is where we manage the syndicate, um, at least up to date, up to now. 
Um, and, you know, they've specifically said they're not going to allow Bitcoin payments, which is the number one thing that our group wants, of course, right, uh, is Bitcoin payments. So unfortunately, we're living in a fiat world there. And there really isn't like a custody with angel investing if you're building a portfolio. What there is, is the trade-off is incredible, you know, illiquidity. Uh, which is if you invest that thousand dollars in Strike or Bitcoin Beach Wallet or whatever startup you're investing in, Relay, if you're in the UK or whatever it is, um, our website is ltng.ventures, by the way. Um, so, you know, like you pretty much have to think. Is this that the wrong? This isn't you guys? Lightning no, Ventures that is, on that is, that is that is where you could apply to join the syndicate. Absolutely. I just thought you could see, see I could have a little peek at some of the investments you guys you guys made. Oh, and this is alphabetical. So it seems like quite a lot because this is just A and B and I recognize a bunch of companies. Yeah. Hey, Azteco. Yes, Good I love stuff. Azteco. I actually Breeze. talked to Akeem earlier today. I'm sure Akeen would love oh. to be on your show. Maybe he already has been. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a great no, dude. No, he hasn't been on the we show had, yet. We had a Geyser. Yeah, we had the geyser. I yeah, had the geyser dude come on. That's pretty cool. I'd galoy. All right. Hey, relay. I like those guys. It's good stuff. Unchained. Nice. Bitcoin company. Dude, good stuff. Nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, rather than a lot of other VCs, they want to target rich people. Hey, give us $250,000 and we'll invest it for you. And that's great and all, that's fine. But I think it's cool to offer those investments to other people. I remember when I started investing, uh, wanting to learn about how do you invest in private companies? You know, how would you mm -hmm. invest in- Yes. How would you invest in- Coinbase or Robinhood back when Coinbase just sold Bitcoin, by the way, uh, back, you know, and, and these type of YC companies, right? Airbnb was a crazy idea then or DoorDash. How do you get those like crazy returns that that did right because actually, cause actually oh. ipos are where the vcs and everyone dump on retail that's and right so it's it's how do i get in before the ipo so that i can dump on retail with all of the the insiders yeah that's right well um they don't sometime. dump all their shares but yes that is the chance for no, them to I monetize used to think they're like oh an ipo like it they were like an ipo it's exciting this is where the pub public get to get to buy this thing that's really you know must be really valuable if it's it's finally being allowed to be public but not actually the ipo is a is is an opportunity for for the dump right it's 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 hyped um uh by by you know inside of investors and then it's dumped buy them buy them later and i think shit, shit coins are just i've talked about this before shit coins are just the like lowest cost way of doing the pump and dump they used to do tech ipos now they just do shit coins because it's cheaper okay now we could probably talk about that for quite a while all right but um look i uh you're a look funny at guy. And Horowitz you're, 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 you're a funny guy okay but now here's the thing there's plenty of dumping opportunities on the way to the ipo Okay, there's secondary transactions, okay, and there are other ways because when you're an early stage investor, hey, Fold, you know Fold? Yep. Gotta love Fold, right? Everybody loves Fold. They Maybe did the stack, Walton. the Walton. SPAC Walton's recently. got a problem with everything, so he's probably got a problem with Fold too. But no, okay, so Fold, right? Great company. No, I was, I, I was, I was thinking about OpenSea and Corey, how Corey had a seed investment in OpenSea and then he sold it, um, I, you know, bef be before they've, you know, gone, I don't think they go public, but like, you know, series, but after a Series B or something. You can't. Okay. So that's the thing though, is we, you know, when you invest in early stage companies, right? Like I, I was lucky. I invested personally in fold seed round. They're going public this year. The ticker's FLD, yep. you know, that'll be the first real, that's not a mining company or whatever. That'll be a real Bitcoin IPO. That'll be a fun time. Uh, but like, you know, uh, if you were a firm, if you were a fund that invested in that seed round, okay, um, that was quite a long time ago. All right. You have to do, you have to distribute money back to your investors. Okay. It, it's not like a, a close your eyes, hold but your nose and pray forever. So if you're, if your investment is up, say 30 X, okay, mm. you invested at 10 million and now, you know, it's worth, um, it's worth 300 million. Okay. You can sell half, you can sell a quarter, you can sell a third because the companies that come in at that later stage, right? You need new blood on your cap table. There are, there are private equity firms, there are later stage VCs that specialize in that stage, right? So they kind of buy the early investors equity. You get new people in on the cap table. Those early VCs get to give that money back to their investors and the cycle has to go. 
the cycle has to continue. It can't just be like, wait, hold it for 12 years when they IPO and then dump on retail, you know, and sadly that does happen. You know, sadly, it's usually an IPO is not a great opportunity for the retail investor initially, but like the the biggest gains in those companies often happen years after they IPO. You know, you look at like a Netflix or you look at an Amazon or whatever, right? I mean, there were people dumping on retail when they went public, but like, mm -hmm. look what happened in the years after, you know what I mean? If you're thinking on this low time preference or sort of whatever, but Walton, you're a trip, dude, we could, we could have like a nice debate. I, I like, I like your, your attitude. <laughs> if it's not, cold, Walton has no filter. Enough. No, cold, he has no filter. Yeah, that's all right. But look, um, the unicorns, right, in in the stock market, right, like Netflix's, Microsoft, stuff like that. I mean, let's be honest. Those companies that came back to deliver the the tens, you know, the multi-baggers, it's, it's not like the majority, right? It's not the majority of the market. But I do have a question for you. Let's say that you're like a Series B investor in one of these, in one of these companies, right? So as a Series B investor, would would like the company contact you and let you know that you would be able to sell your shares back to them or something like that, or let you know that the next series of investor, how does that, I, I'm just, I'm very curious about this. Okay. So there's a number of ways that this could happen. Okay. One of them is called a tender offer. And a tender offer is when the company wants to clean up their cap table and buy back those shares themselves. Mm. Okay. So sometimes the the company them, themselves, whether they're trying to IPO or whatever they're doing, they'll make an offer uh, to try and buy them directly from people. But usually where you invested that money is either it's, it's in a fund or a deal like our Lightning Ventures deal. If both mm -hmm. of you invested in a Lightning Ventures deal, right? Pick a company. You mentioned Relay. Okay. If both of you guys invested in Relay and we were up 30 or 50X on Relay, okay, it is technically my decision what we're going to do. I can send out a message to everyone who invested in that deal and I can take the temperature and I can say, what do you think, guys? You want to sell a third? You want to sell half? F you, hold it till IPO. You know, don't sell anything, dump it all. And you kind of get a feel for what everyone wants to do. And everyone cannot be treated equally in that transaction. So if we are going to sell 25% of it and distribute a ton of money to everyone who invested in that, right? And you guys can, everyone can buy Bitcoin or do whatever they're going to do. And we're riding the rest. Okay. We're still riding a bunch of equity, but we, we trimmed a little bit and was able to take something mm. off the table. That's ultimately like one person's decision. Unless you invested yourself personally for like maybe a $25,000 minimum into one of these uh, startups so, yourself, you don't get to really make that decision. You just are a part so of So your Michael Burry, Scion Capital kind of kind of vibe, no, it, it's, not a, it's not a democracy. Like it's, uh, fuck you guys. I've got all your money. We're, we're going long this until, until our balls fall off. Like Coke. Not not because I designed it that way, but because I have to live in the way that it is designed for me to play in, right? I'm mm -hmm. an emerging fund manager. I raised my first fund, which was no fees and no carry. I make nothing off of it, okay? It was just, just to get experience out there. It wasn't even a very big fund, okay? So I wanted to build up the syndicate, the world's largest group of angel investors, this angel investing network. I have operators, I have CEOs, I have badass people. I have people who are just you cool, Right. I would love it if you guys were in there. Right. Maybe it's a sponsorship opportunity. Maybe you can network with people. It doesn't matter if you want to pike a thousand dollars into the next deal or not. I just want to have a big group of badass, awesome people. That's kind of the goal. And then when a company needs help or is looking to hire someone, you know, we have it there. It's not that I set it up like I, I get to make the decisions. It's that there is no other way to handle it. OK. Um, mm. And, you know, that's there just there is no other way. So. You know, no, I, I appreciate you explaining this. I think a lot of people don't necessarily get this kind of visibility in, into that. So thank you very much. I, okay, I have one more question about this stuff, but then we're moving to the Thunder Funder stuff. Okay. So, so that we could talk about that. But my, my last question is this, because I did notice on the roster of investments, you had Swan. And I know that recently, right, like this is a pleb show, like lots of plebs, like we're all familiar with Swan, you know what I mean? Like uh, some of us, right, knew Corey and, and Brady and a lot of these other people, even before they were, they were Swan. So I, I have to ask you, 
based on the news that that you've been seeing because I'm, I'm assuming that you know you see what's going on and everything and obviously they, they just have to you know let a whole bunch of people go i don't know what you are allowed to share but as a investor in this do you have any kind of visibility uh that is maybe i don't know not being shared on twitter like what do you have sufficient visibility yeah i so i guess it's kind of like a two-pronged vague question do you have any visibility and are you allowed to say anything i guess that's the question (laughs) so when you think about investing in a startup whether it's your own money or whether you're investing in a fund or you're part of a syndicate um you're a minority investor okay mm-hmm. so if you know if you pulled together all the money that we invested uh in swan through you know uh our first fund and you know syndicates or whatever we're talking about maybe three hundred and fifty thousand dollars maybe mm-hmm. I, I don't know i can't think off the top of my head but like it's not a lot of money Okay, over like a series of multiple rounds as the company was doing very well, you know, it's like 140,000 and 25,000 and another 50,000 like this is not a lot and you're talking about um, a company that's raised tens of millions of dollars. Um, Yes. So when you are a minority investor, um, you don't really get a lot of information and to be quite honest with you. like we've invested in over 40 Bitcoin startups, right? This is a way Mm -hmm. for plebs to invest in Bitcoin companies, okay? So if we scrape together a syndicate for a company that that you know and like, right? I mean, you could just just name a company, right? Um, Whatever it is. Um, We can't like look at that company's balance sheet month to month Okay, and really scrutinize what like that's not what it's about. Mm. Um, we can be helpful, we can be supportive, we can read their updates, we can pass it along to the investors and try and get people excited and 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 help the company as much as they'll you know communicate with us. But if a year goes by, I don't think I've ever gotten an, a, an actual update from Strike. You know, I'll be honest with you, their last series B round that we participated in, Jack was cool. He's like, I want to get away for the plebs to participate. Lightning Ventures is the best vehicle. He carved out 500K. All right, we filled the allocation through our group. A lot of people, you know, supported the company. I don't think we've ever gotten an update from Strike. Hmm. Interesting. As far as like the the inside of what's going on with the company or whatever. Nothing, huh? But that's kind of expected, okay? Okay. As opposed to companies that I'm really personally involved with, right? At the very early stages, right? I mean, I w- I helped Azteco put together their first round. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, or companies like Slice, um, the browser extension. Like, I help these companies a lot, right? So I have, like, pretty deep inside knowledge as to what they're doing because I'm, I'm actively involved. So mm-hmm. it really comes down to, like, the check size and, and what you – the most important thing, at least for founders to realize, mm-hmm. is, like, just because you take money from an investor, they can't actually, like, influence your business most of the time. They can be a pain in the ass. They can send you emails. They can ask you annoying questions. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I don't want to do that, okay? But, like, just because you take two hundred and fifty <laughs> grand from somebody and you let them on your cap table – to help you with your Bitcoin startup, they cannot tell you how to run your business, right? It's still your show and you're in charge. And yeah, at some point in time in the later stages, when you have board seats and all these other kind of fancy things, then maybe it gets a little bit trickier to just Mm -hmm. give the middle finger and do whatever you want to do. But for the most part, that's kind of what you can do. You can just do what you want to do. So it's realistic. I mean, as far as Swan goes, uh, as far as I know, they're fine. Oh, very That's interesting. It. And I, I really appreciate your take. Uh, I, I do. Um, I, I think that for whatever reason, there's not enough people kind of They're talking fine about now this. After they so. sacked a bunch of people and like cleaned up their balance sheet by not having extra salaries. OK, yeah. Um, now they're safe. <laughs> now, now, now they're safe. Right. It's not. It's not like it's not like those people got hired two years ago after um, Bitcoin magazine uh, fired them also due to financial mismanagement um I, and look my anyway. wife worked my wife worked there and she was one of those people that got axed that day you know so um i'm, sorry I, I'm to hear that. well i'm with you it's just like stuff happened right mm-hmm. what what happened what happened but how, why do you fire people on a monday like how bad things have to be that you fire because there's going to be a conference Friday? because they're going to be a conference that they can go look for a job if you 
fire them. They wouldn't got Maybe. to look for a job. That's okay. That's that's actually why that's my you only fire them the Friday before. Why is it happening on the Monday? Whatever. <laughs> that's a good point, actually. It's a very good point. Uh, yeah, you know, that's um that's a really good point as to why that happened on the Monday. I thought it would have been better to do it after the conference because you had a lot of people going to the conference. Morale mm -hmm. was high, Swan had a booth. Like, why would you want to send, you know, dozens of people to that event that had been fired like just days before. Like when it's also it saying, right? "Hey, we're in trouble. We're going to turn up at this conference, but actually, we're not doing great as a company right now." Like it's it's a weird like weakness display like before a big public Bitcoin event. Look, you know, I don't know if you've ever ran a company either, okay? But like as far as I'm nothing in like that, this. No, I'm I'm in that seat now with Thunder Funder, and I have to say it's a lot easier to be the VC and to talk to a founder, and they tell you they're burning however much money every month, and you can just slit their throat and slap them around and be like, "Are you crazy? Like, what are you doing?" Blah blah blah. And let me tell you, uh, after being just in this seat for a little bit so far, it's way different. Okay, it is way mm. different, and the shit adds up. You know what I mean? And um, and we still have no revenue with Thunder Funder and I'm watching every dollar. And I can only imagine that that increases as you go, right? I mean, it's no secret that Swan likes to spend money. I mean, they throw the best parties and all these events here in Miami mm -hmm. and everything and hiring and a couple hundred people. And you know what I mean? And and maybe it just catches up with you. Maybe someone pulls a term sheet. Maybe you think that you're going to get X amount of dollars and like it happens and there's a there's a reality that's faced, you know, but certainly it wasn't gradual. It wasn't, hey, we're cutting 10 percent in April, 10 percent. The, the theory, April. the theory I heard that I, I kind of like is that um it's like te basically tether a CIA and tether rug swans mining business because the CIA are just trying to do general, uh, what's the word? Cause general chaos in the Bitcoin industry. I'm, I'm like, surely they could be, they'd be like more targeted than that. But like, I don't know. I don't know how these things work. Who knows? Um, but I, I do think it was tether that rugged swan. So it's, um, it's an interesting situation. It was their last te tether. Don't do any business in the United States. Um, and this was the only like partnership I believe they had in the United States that they seemingly terminated. And with that, Swan then uh, changed a, a lot. I, I still think there was something else that was going on because that week we had the Swan announcement. We had Marathon all of a sudden pretending uh, that they're going to buy a whole bunch of Bitcoin, but really they're just being fined way more millions of dollars. And then, of course, we had the Fold news uh, which you uh, may have been expecting, right? That, that they were going to be uh, essentially uh, merging into that uh, into that company there, uh, Emerald Trust or whatever they're called. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, I don't know. I just I just found that whole scenario interesting. But anyways, moving on. Thunder Funder. All right. <laughs> Finally, we made it here. <laughs> so tell us tell us about Thunder Funder because before the show you were explaining how th this is like a this is a way that you you want to get essentially plebs involved uh in, in investing or or doing or providing venture capital so let's let's talk about Thunder Funder what is the mission at Thunder Funder CF okay so for those people who were uncomfortable clicking the right button with Lightning Ventures, right? Maybe they weren't uh, uh, an accredited investor, okay? Um, Thunder Funder is a way that anyone, virtually anyone, can invest in early stage, or let's just say Bitcoin and open source startups, right? It's a little bit a little bit outside of Bitcoin only, okay? Things like Start9. Start9 is not a Bitcoin company, right? Um, yeah. But, you know, they're known for some some Bitcoin things, right? Maybe there's some stuff. stuff. Maybe we could do a deal with Primal. You know, maybe we could do something with um, with Damas. Uh, so look, to expand it outside, to actually accept Bitcoin, to actually do things where maybe can we build in a Bitcoin wallet where if you have 0.1 Bitcoin and you want to invest $1,000 in Stacker News, can you just do like a click, click, click? And, you know, that's equity, right? Um, so those type of things that we really want to do. The difference with Reg CF, it started in 2013. Um, it was really not possible for regular everyday people to invest in private companies. And it also wasn't possible for private companies to raise money from their fans and people who use their service, right? And that's anyone, that's even you guys. If Pleb Underground was a media company, okay, that, 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 
needed to raise $500,000 to get to the next level and build a studio and do a 24 seven thing and get a deal with Tubi or some network or whatever, and like do something right. You could actually use a platform like Thunder Funder, mm -hmm. not like Geyser. Geyser is a portfolio company, love mix, Delios, awesome people. Okay. But that's more like donations, right? Funding a movie, funding a project, you know, donating, uh, all that stuff. And There's no legally like, binding contract between your donation and what you might get back, right? It's like kick, Kickstarter. It's hopefully we're going to give you the thing that you're, you know, but <laughs> you're paying we'll for. see. We'll find out. Right. So, th so this is an actual investment in, in that thing or that company. Mm -hmm. Also, the things that we can't do with Lightning Ventures, we can't actually advertise these things. We can't actually go on Twitter and say, hey, we have a deal in Pleb Underground. You can invest here. Okay, we can't do that because there's all these sort of non-solicitation laws with those type of deals. It's 506B. That's how those are for those accredited investors. We can't do that. Okay, mm -hmm. we, we get around that law pretty good because if you see us doing an interview on the Lightning Ventures YouTube channel, Once in a Blue Moon, you have a pretty good idea that we have a deal live for that company, right? We can't say it, but that's kind of really how that works. So when you go to um, a, th a, a Reg CF deal, you can still raise up to $5 million for the company mm -hmm. and you can talk about it publicly. The company can email all their customers and users. So you get something like a Lightning Labs or a Blockstream or a Strike or one of these big companies that really wants to like allow you to have a couple hundred dollars of a real equity, a real deal in them and like further align with their success right? It, Substack just did a very big one. Substack did a, a big public deal and they allowed everyone who used Substack, you want to invest 200 bucks, like you, you own a percentage of it and whatever. So it wow. serves a certain purpose. Yeah. It serves a certain purpose for, for that element of it. And then at the same time, like, are we sponsoring the hackathons? Are we doing the really early stage stuff where maybe we're only shipping them $35,000? Okay. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's enough to to do something really cool for something really early. So it comes in in all types of flavors, right? Whether it's really early or not. But look, it's not just about the investors and this is what I'm trying to do. It's about the community, all right? And I hate that word. People abuse that fucking community it's the worst. word. It's right. the worst. But like, but like, I don't know what else to say. Because <laughs> no, I like, know, we can't use another word. You just have to hope bullshit. that people can no, see no, the there, asterisk. There is not one right? homogenous Bitcoin community, but there's no, exactly. a lot of community in Bitcoin. Yeah. But like, okay, if you're a if you're a builder, okay, if you're a builder, if you're a founder, if you're an aspiring an investor, if you're a content creator, like I just want people to make a fucking profile, okay, and like get a message box and like whether you want to be private or you want to be public or you want to set a different display name, okay, but like if you're doing the co-founder matching, like, hey, this is my open source hardware wallet, like it's really fucking cool. This is where I'm at with it right now. I'm looking for this type of person, okay? Maybe you meet somebody on there or not. Whether those people are investing in deals that ultimately that's really all of our revenue, right? It doesn't cost any money, but whether they're investing in deals or not, I just think it will fuel good things. I think mm -hmm. it will do good things to provide a place where, hey, Pleb Underground, like they have a profile, they're looking for sponsors, like it's cheap as hell. Like some of our portfolios are on there. Like maybe they want to just like, Maybe they want to connect. Maybe they're doing a go-to-market plan and they have like a little bit of budget for you guys, right? And none of that has anything to do with us making money as Thunder Funder, right? But I want to kind of create that thing and, and, and it's very hard to do. Like Bolt Fun, I love John's, like that's done. Bolt Fun is over, you know? Or like, um, you know, the Bitcoin Design Club or kind of all these type of things that like, you know, I'm, so we're going to give it our go. And we're going to see what we can do. But that is a big part of it, right? Is is getting people on board that can just connect. Maybe we do a feed from Bitcoin or jobs. Okay, maybe we have like a jobs board and like stuff is in front of you if you want to work in Bitcoin or not. Like we're just filling it out. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're just feeling it out. And it's it's a lot of work. We have like so much work to do. So I like, I like it. You're even trying to help the people that used to work at Swan. It's very good of you. Um uh, I think there's lots like of Walden, Walden's going to hit you um, with the stick every time. It's you get honestly, I'm though. like someone someone's no, got to do something for these these people <laughs> and their families that that you know 
were prom were promised many things by uh, wannabe VCs because <coughs> uh, because some you know there there are real VCs and there's wannabe VCs anyway. So what you else will, do we say? I've got a question for you. Can I talk about Rockamoto? I think we should talk about Rockamoto. Like, um, because there, apparently there's no community in in Bitcoin, but I did, I I I was I was astounded by the extent of the 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 Bitcoin and music community. Um, um that, that i'm sort of like on the edge of at this point in time like uh and uh peeked into at the wave lake event um that, that zbd were, were throwing uh in in nashville mike tell us more about rockamoto so satoshi rockamoto is definitely fun and it uh came about out of the blue in mexico uh at ugly old goats conference and there was hardly anyone there and i, I used to work in music i was a band manager and a concert promoter i worked in music for a long time and um it just came about that like there were a bunch of people there that i knew could play and there was this weird cover band that just had gear and i basically talked them into letting Wait, when them... you say gear gear like Drum, not heroin. Two guitars. Oh like, right, because like, like, in like the gear, gear can mean drugs to like for oh, musicians. No, no, so no, just, no. just to clarify. So we just um, talked them into, hey, what can we do something? Can we screw around for a little bit? And just you know, drummer and Mir, you know, Giacomo's uh, wife, you know, she's a professional mm -hmm. singer and Bitcoin mechanic. You know, Lex, he used to play with Donna Summer. Like he's a beast on bass and keys and whatever. You know, Gabe Higgins was playing drums. Canute was on guitar. Mm -hmm. And we just like put together um, an awesome band. Like it was just a great night. And we were like, let's do that again. And that's kind of where it happened. We've had two amazing ones in Prague. Uh, we had one in Riga last year, sadly missing that now. That's going on right now. Uh, we did it in El Salvador, which was great. We did it in Nashville with Wave Lake. And um, I'm hoping that we can do more. It's just a lot of fun. And if you know how to play something, um, you know, kind of leaving it open and letting people get up there and play and just having a band that can follow along. And, you know, just if you want to just get up and sing, you can sing. So that's kind of the idea with Satoshi. But I think you should be having these at like so many more conferences. You should be like pegging them on to like all the Bitcoin conferences. Um, like it should be a permanent side event. Like I, I like I, I'd go to every single one of them. Yeah. So wait, I could raise money on Thunder Funder for Satoshi Rakamoto, <laughs> and I could make it a business, right? Yeah, so Rakamoto on tour, and you do like every like every single Bitcoin conference, like, and it's just like it's a yeah, it's 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 the best party. Like, I think I think we should do it, Mike. We got to do it. All right. Well, I'm glad that you had a good time at that one because you know that was a little bit of a of a rough night uh, after the wave. Got to have a rooftop. That's the way to do it. The like best parties have a rooftop always. This is true. This is true. This is true. Okay, Mike, um, we, we got to wrap up the uh, the fireside chat. But before we do, how can the viewers and listeners get in touch with you? Where can they find you? And of course, everything Mike says uh, is going to be in the show notes. Okay, so if you want to learn about angel investing or maybe join this community because we can't come up with a better word, right? But I'm sure Walton's working on it there. He's going to let us know. You can go to thunderfunder.com and you can sign up. And then when you're signing up and doing things on the website, every little thing that breaks, just screenshot it and send it to us so that we can fix it because that's where we're at with this product right now at this point in time. All right. If you, if that's not enough and you want to go full DGen and see all of the other best Bitcoin startup investment uh, opportunities that are out there, you can go to ltng.ventures and you can click somewhere on there. It says uh, contact us or join the syndicate or whatever. And we'll, we will email you a custom uh, invite that'll make it easier for your onboarding process with less red tape, if you know what I'm saying. But you gotta, you gotta fill out that form on LTNG Ventures so that we can send you the uh, the cool person link, okay? And then there should be some deals there. But um, that that is pretty much uh, what we have going on and we're just getting started. And if you're a founder looking to raise capital, there's forms on both of those things there too. You can hit the apply to raise button and we're figuring it out as we go. So this is not like a geyser. If you're funding your movie or funding a Broadway play, a Broadway musical about Satoshi, um, this is not the place for something like that. Um, um, but if it's a startup or something in the open source world or some some type of actual business, um, 
we are the place for that. So hopefully absolutely we can get you on board. Awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, guys, that wraps up the fireside chat and we are going to move it on over to wrecked. All right, guys, you know what? We got two things for wrecked. Got yeah, two I had things. to share this. I saw this, I had, I saw I this no during choice. the show. I, I had took, to send it to you because it's, it's too good. Too just good. so you understand, I took out the other things because this was so good. I took out the other things in order to replace them with this thing because I agree, this is way too good. <laughs> anyways anyways guys you know I, I know that a lot of shit coiners get pissed off you know they, they don't want to believe that they're just a bunch of exit liquidity and, and i know that i probably remind shit coiners about this uh, i think on a weekly basis that they are exit liquidity but whale panda whale panda who's been in the space a whole lot longer uh, a whole lot longer and um echoes the the same sentiments <laughs> shit coiners are exit liquidity and the best part is is that there's proof because blockchain so here we go ethereum foundation hates eth holders and here you go guys it's the look on chain note that ethereum foundation deposited thirty-five thousand eth into kraken just now and that's right guys uh this is not the last over 94 time. million dollars of eth apparently that's right 94 million dollars of eth and and just just so people understand right this is not unusual this has happened in previous in in previous bull cycles as well. Okay, this is how the Ethereum Foundation keeps its lights on, and it also has no hard cap. So although uh, a lot of the Ethereum proponents want to sit there and you know kind of just jerk you off about the uh, you know that that they're having deflation and the flipping it's just the and all state, this stuff, Phil, isn't it? It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, the, it the is. Ethereum Foundation is the state. They go, okay, so what we're going to do it's, it's is we're going to take, take money from 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 you whenever we want because it's our money, and then we're going to bribe a bunch of people who who then feel empowered by the Ethereum Foundation and oh, what great people the Ethereum Foundation are. They they provide me with a job and I can I can be a developer working on a you know a bunch of things that are important to me and a. Uh, uh, the Ethereum Foundation is uh, looks after me. They they we should let them do everything. They're so good. They really are good. Anyways, uh, yeah, ETH bag holders down bad, flipping. Not gonna happen. Not gonna make it. Uh, but anyways, anyways, moving on. Well, actually, here before we move on, Mike, do you do you have any comments about? I mean, like we I mean, I spend my whole time just dunking on shitcoin, so I can go on about this forever. You have any thoughts uh, about uh, the ETH Foundation or any of this no, stuff? No comment. That's. <laughs> That's, yeah, that pretty much sums it up. All right, moving on, moving on. But that's okay. Now we're going to talk about Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin layer two. So you guys might have noticed, uh, yeah, you might have noticed uh, on August 22nd that all of a sudden in the morning, in the morning we had a little bit of a fee spike, right? And people were sitting there thinking, oh man, the ordinals guys, it's the runes people, it's this. Actually, it's not. It's not. It's Babylon Bitcoin staking. And of course, I, I had no choice but to retweet that and say, I don't believe it, but we'll see how this plays out. Um, so here you go. This is a screenshot from their, um, from from the Babylon website. You know, does my BTC leave my wallet once it's staked? So essentially, this is, quote unquote, a staking protocol for Bitcoin. Okay. Now, um, you know, obviously, we're, we're not going to necessarily dive into the, the massive, you know, the, the whole massive ecosystem that's being built out around this absolute garbage. Uh, but this is the Babylon ecosystem. There's a whole lot of fun stuff like Web3. Uh, they mentioned decentralized a few times. Uh, unparalleled blockchain. Oh, that's fine. They said decentralized, Phil. Yeah. Must mean it's good. It, yeah, look, yeah, we're good. DeFi we're innovations, good. right? Innovations to DeFi technology. I mean, look, right here. This, again, more of the Bitcoin stake, uh, the Bitcoin staking world. One protocol to get Ethereum, Bitcoin, and DPIN native. So, look, you, you already know where this is going. And guess what? Let's scroll right up here, guys. This is the, uh, yeah, I, I, I dug into this because I did a clip about this well over a month ago. Um, and nobody cared because why would anybody care about this? But now the bigger accounts are shilling you this crap. So it's like, oh, my God, look at this staking on Bitcoin. Yeah, well, we were already dunking on this a long time ago. And yeah, I'll take a I'll take a lap for that one. But anyways, here's hey, the I can see arrows. The arrows mean yes. the money goes round and everyone gets rich. Yeah, so, just like every one of these diagrams. Right. But look, but this is the piece I think people aren't paying attention to. So keep in mind, you're staking your Bitcoin. What the fuck is LBTC? What is that shit? Okay, so look. loser Bitcoin. 
Thank you. It, yes, but but wait, there's more, okay? So you guys saw up here in this diagram, there's this whole little consortium thing, and essentially you've got to beg this consortium to unstake your Bitcoin and to do whatever the hell you're going to do. This is the this is the begging place. This is where you come to beg for your money back. Okay, now let's, let's dive into the consortium. Lombard's consortium is a decentralized, ah, beautiful, they said the magic word, decentralized state machine for sharing ownership and managing assets among various members. Who are those members? How are they chosen? It doesn't matter, just give us your money. The consortium performs the following actions to manage these processes, okay? And here's this whole giant garbage nonsense thing, which we're not gonna go through, but you need to understand the consortium is this non-central entity that appears to be a central entity that decides when your money can leave the ecosystem and when it can't. Now, the reason why I gave, the reason why I read through what the consortium was, was so that you guys can understand what's happening here, okay? Here's the processes where you stake your, bit, your, your, your BTC on the Bitcoin blockchain, right? Listen to this. You're not staking Bitcoin on Bitcoin. This is fucking nonsense. So here we go. The staker receives. No, no, I mean, that's too simple, Phil. It's got to be no. much more elegant than that. <laughs> this is so dumb. The staker receives the notarized data. And yeah, here we go. RPL encoded data, unit 256, blah, blah, blah. And invokes the mint transaction to get their LBTC. There it is. There, there it is. Here's your, there, there's your shit coin. Now, here, wait. Invoke it, it, these nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude, look at this unstake LBTC. Not available yet. So, so I don't Not know if you have available yet. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so come stake your corn. You can't move it. Anyways, the staker burns LBTC tokens on the designated blockchain. So again, I, weren't we staking Bitcoin? What is this LBTC thing? And then, of course, here's the best part, guys. Here's where the begging takes place. The consortium, after verification, unstakes the designated amount of LBTC. Where did my be? Where, where did my Bitcoin go again? From the chosen finality provider, who chose that provider, and who so is that Phil, provider? And then sends the Bitcoin transaction to the address passed to the burn transaction for the withdrawal transaction. The consortium builds. The consortium builds a Bitcoin transaction and signs in with Cube Signer. So if you don't understand the the freaking hostage situation <laughs> that is happening to your Bitcoin here, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's way Sorry, Walton. Go on. I was going to say, so is it like the swan of the of the yield world? Because there's no sell button. <laughs> there's no sell button. I don't think this ends well, guys. I don't think this ends well. Um, Mike? I don't understand it. it. I mean... You're not meant to. That's the point. I, I, that's that's, I point. that's why are. all of these things work. It's because it's smart enough to confuse midwits. And so midwits go... Oh, th there's clearly something clever happening here. Well, I don't understand all of it. Well, these people seem trustworthy enough. I'm going to I'm going to give my money to them. It's a relic of 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 outsourcing critical thinking that's very common in the fiat world, where people just use um like celebrities as like oracles on judgment or like you know it's it's people have stopped thinking like you like <laughs> yeah it's like people don't switch their brains on um there yeah. there are there are a lot of borderline stupid things that you could do with bitcoin um but whatever you just went over there is way too complex for my brain but like they're like the they're like the the easy to understand really dumb things that you can do um but that's just a really complicated dumb thing right so that, would, that would take me a whole weekend to figure out what's going on with the consortium and I, it's very so you're saying who find who bitcoin bitcoin roulette wait a second i think lightning roulette is actually a thing one sec lightning it used to uh, be it um, used to no, be. i'm pretty sure he made a poker site as well like uh anyway whatever like the point is you can you can bet it you can bet it all on on red or, or black well it'd be who, orange and black maybe Kudos to him. Kudos to them for choosing LBTC to create another layer of confusion for anyone I, who who knows a little bit. When you said that, yes. And to your point, right? Let's just we're, we'll clear the air. I did speak to Adam back, and he did confirm, right, that LBTC obviously has nothing to do with Liquid or Lightning or anything that actually has to do with Bitcoin. It is a completely new minted shitcoin that has its own little shit chain okay and i'm pretty sure lbtc has to do with that lombard ecosystem either way guys 
This ah, is wrecked. Lombard. Lombard. So exactly. That, so th this is the piece that they're not talking about with Babylon, right? All we've heard about on Twitter is the whole the Babylon staking, but it all doesn't work without this, this Lombard ecosystem, which was what that whole entire, that, that chart was with all the arrows and the consortium and everything. Like, I mean, this is anyways, I, I don't think this I, ends well and I don't understand enough to be able to like debunk it, uh, like on the like extremely technical level. All I could say is that fucking looks like a Rube Goldberg machine. Like that, that's all that looks like to me. I, I don't know what else to call it. Anyways, guys, that wraps up wrecked. Yeah, that's right. That's going to do it for wrecked. And we are going to move it on over to the Hopium. The Hopium. Welcome back to Hopium, where I have three stories for you this week uh three items of interest the first is uh, an eloquent um post by i think i think i guess some shit coin i didn't even click on the profile to check but like you know some some nonsense uh probably some shit coin because they use the word altcoin rather than shit coin um uh, but I'm going to read read the post because it was it was at least fun to read. Um, and uh, anyway, I don't think it's called Smiley Capital, by the way. I don't think you guys understand what an actual bull market looks like. Every single altcoin on a sex five to fifty percent up on the day, persistently rotating for three to five days. A quick two, 24 hour correction resume for months. Masses collectively throwing high eight figures into every yield Ponzi there is. BTC rallying so hard it paralyzes the entire market, but at first sign of consolidation, alts absolutely rip. BTC consolidations after face-melting rallies are met with complete reset in OI funding. One cannot believe their eyes. A price while derivatives cool off fucking sideways. Local TA gurus call bull flags resume up shortly. Once BTC is done, ETH pulls an ever stronger rally. You'd think it was a hundred million uh, market cap mimetic being shilled by the local cabal. Brings the entire market up. Altcoins start having weeks, months of inhumane moves. The only caveat... He spelled it wrong. Uh, de <sighs> devastating short-term corrections to wipe the leverage. Alas, riding longs from much lower and or longing these wicks is a 99% safe play. Hell, I'd say 100%, but some of you will 100x leverage an altcoin if I say that. Your spot bags, depending on where you're at in your journey, you're probably looking at watches, boats, planes, houses. Hell, some of you will be looking to buy islands and super yachts. And if you think just for a second, you can come up with an actual good reason we're not getting that again for at least a few months in the near future, you're delighted delusional your downside risk is 50 70 percent boohoo your upside risk your sorry your upside is generational wealth that will make every ex-girlfriend pull their hair out for losing you strap in because it's coming this time is indeed not fucking different i advise against listening to influencers that already made it and are here to unload their seed investments on you. I don't need to do that. I'll unload on the tourists at the top. And the person below says, I read the whole thing. Instant follow, instant bookmark, instant notice on what is this? Is this a poem? Is this Shakespeare? What a masterpiece of a long form post. My hopium receptors are at extreme high levels. Right. Um, um, Wow. I admire the the level of testosterone that this guy is pretending to have. <laughs> yeah. um, Good storyteller. That's it. And uh, yeah, but I kind of I don't know. It was it was it had it had some vibes. It was it was entertaining for me at least. Yeah, definitely entertaining. Mike, your thoughts on this one? Uh, all I can say is I'm entertained as well. So and bullish, right? Entertained and bullish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good stuff, Walton. Yeah, I, I channeled my inner gladiator for reading that one. I think. Um, all right, up up next, another 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 gladiator. Um, my my buddy who who hung uh, a decent bit in in Nashville um, is is joining the underground. Wait, what's this? Let's have a look. That's right. This is a teaser for a brand new Bitcoin show. Let's level set the playing field for what you can expect to come. Keeping hopium narratives in check, showcasing the incentives of politicians and other detractors, and a reminder of the reason for Bitcoin's existence. A medium to exit the crooked fiat system. <laughs> you may recognize me from another YouTube channel. But some of you may just say, who the f is this guy? Well, my name is Ulrich, 
and my super shadowy Anon name on X is Sir Ulrich. And like I said, I have this new show starting and well, it just may taste different than what you're used to seeing. I'm going to bring you unabated, uncompromised clarity into why Bitcoin means more than an arbitrage on debt or a slick trade. I'll talk about it being a tool that provides an objective, efficient, non-sovereign medium to interact with others in a truly free market. Oh, and everything you see here will be self-researched, self-written, self-recorded, and self-edited. And you'll never hear that familiar pacified narrative that rules the algorithm keeping people in an open air fiat prison. Here we'll honestly recognize CEOs from banking, MIC, and tech companies as politicians, beholden to congressional committees to conspire against you. I'll continually remind you the military, which receives so much tax revenue and hidden tax redistribution, is run by generals and admirals that are individually nominated by the president and confirmed by the Senate, aka politicians. I'll continually rehearse that Bitcoin provides none of the preference that any elected or unelected politician has in the legacy financial system. The Cantillon favored few are losing their grip on the world. Value creators and their incentives shall inherit the earth. On this show, you are gonna know the Federal Reserve and those that support it are your enemy. Central banking is a Marxist construct and a liability to a free, productive, and abundant society. Unless you're part of the parasitic banking or political class, it is that construct that is keeping you from living your best life on this planet. Bitcoin is a revolution as it will and has changed the world. But if we truly understand it, then we too cannot resist being changed ourselves. So we pursue knowledge and application of the protocol. We grow in understanding of the tools that support it. We hold fast to the principles that drove Satoshi to build this system. We repel the watered down Bitcoin plus shills for the sake of making everyone happy. We stand our ground against high time preference scams and a globalist dystopia. Now, if this all sounds like a good deal, this is probably the show for you. But I do have one question. Are you down with the underground? So he made more and more people, more and more people down with the underground. This is this is, of course, a very, very good thing. Yeah. Uh, Mike, are you down with the underground? I am now. <laughs> um, that's, that's really awesome. cool, that's though. Good. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, that was a great video. We're super happy to have him join the uh, the pleb underground. So what? Yeah, what's happening? The, awesome. the 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 pleb underground is growing. Yeah, bullish. That's some good hopium right there. All right, and the final the final bit of hopium. Nice. Madex. Nice. Don't call it a dream. Call it a plan. That's right. Um, if if you if you wanna. If 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 don't don't dream about putting some of your um uh money into uh custody <laughs> assets like like Mike plan to 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 put them uh in 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 the ETFs no don't don't do that but do whatever you want to do uh, but don't forget what it's all for right like uh, don't just don't just be sitting on sitting on money and going I have a dream. Um, you gotta you gotta start planning. You gotta start you gotta start building, um, um, because otherwise you you'll you'll get there and then you go. Well, this was kind of pointless. And I think this is one thing that that mm -hmm. humans don't understand well, and I'm myself included. When you have something, when you have some sort of goal or some sort of objective that you're that that you're working towards for a long time, when you finally get it, it doesn't hit like you think it. Like you think it will yeah sure you're pleased you you got it you're pleased you achieved it whatever but it doesn't complete you right like the the uh i got like I, I i used to hate this expression of like like it's not about like the the end result it's about the journey but like life it's is true. actually life really is that um and i think you you have to you have to try and work out how to how to resolve this i think bitcoin um un unfortunately makes it more difficult because you go well in four years what could my dream be 
in eight years, what could my dream be? Mm -hmm. but, but okay, like you got Are you are you are you planning to get there? Have you have you planned who who's going to be joining you on this dream? All of these things matter. And I just want to point out, we we would like to have Mike come back on the on the show at some point. So we we don't we don't want to hit him with the stick too many times. I think maybe yeah. like Pleb Underground should <laughs> somehow host a virtual Rockamoto. And I just came up with this idea. So like, oh uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll you're trying to butter out. him we'll up, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Gonna... I, I I do like that. Sorry, go on, Mike. We're gonna make it happen for sure. I'm excited about all your. Uh... Uh, another show on your channel too and what you guys are doing so let me know when we can apply are you have you have open applications for more shows on your channel absolutely it's called Always. just send us a dm and talk to us <laughs> that's it that's our formal application um but yeah i think uh i think that's some pretty good hopium i think that does it for us good stuff walton very good stuff guys that wraps up the weekly episode, the 100th episode of Pleb Underground. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to check us out on our audio-only platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. If you want to stream us sats, check us out on fountain.fm. But before we go, Mike, how do the viewers find you? One last time, how do they get in touch with you? thunderfunder.com thunderfunder.com you can hear that acdc riff yep like at the next rockamoto they did that one in prague it was pretty good thunderfunder.com very cool very cool guys all right walton how do we end this fuck shitcoins.com please like and subscribe we'll see you next week more toxic, Peace. More toxic than the most toxic